Hi everyone, my name's Sam, and welcome to a new series on this channel I call 3D Printed RC Models. In this episode, I'm extremely happy to introduce this 174th scale RC boat that I designed in Blender 3D. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, it's a rather small boat. It has all the correct boat navigation lights, port, starboard and stern, plus the main masthead lights. I designed these little turn clips. They are completely custom, designed to be easily 3D printed, lightweight and utilize a custom made silicone seal that does a good job at keeping the water out of the inner hull. I also needed to design a tool simply for removing them, as using anything else is quite difficult. Inside the boat we have five major components, the battery, motor, electronic speed controller, the radio receiver and the rudder servo. All these components work together in giving the boat its main functionality. So how did I create this boat? For the next part of the video I'll be going over the main steps I did to create it. Near the end of the video I'll be taking it out to some local park ponds for the main demonstration. Ok, let's get right to it. It all started with this very small hull model. My goal here was to build the smallest boat that I possibly could. This hull is just 15 centimeters long. And unfortunately, it's a bit too small for the components that I chose to use. As you can see, it struggles to displace just 80 grams of weight. Next I will go over some of the blender design work I did. Overall, this took a few months of work. I try a few different modeling techniques and different designs until I finally settle on this design. I then exported all the individual parts to be sliced and 3D printed. There are a lot of parts. 38 in total. Before printing all of the hull parts, I decided to print a copy of the motor mount and hull that I would only use for testing purposes. First I wanted to test how much thrust the prop will produce. I also wanted to test the hull's displacement with all the components inside. The total weight of all the components is 70 grams and the total weight of the hull is 33 grams. Doing this test gives me a rough idea about component placement for balancing. I then use this knowledge to place the component mounts within Blender. I started by printing the hull. As I mentioned before, this is 1mm thick with a line count of 2 and this seems to be the best thickness for strength and weight. Next I printed all of the other hull components such as the ribbing, servo mount, prop, motor mount and many others. Next I start removing the supports from the hull and the motor mount. This motor mount is designed to be glued directly into the hull. However, with a future version of this boat I would like to make the motor mount removable so that different motors can be used without having to reprint the entire hull. Now I start to clean and sand the back of the hull. I start with a medium 100 grit sandpaper and then move on to a fine 400 grit sandpaper. I do the same for the bottom of the motor mount. So for this next part of the video, I'll be working on the parts that make up the prop kit and the rudder kit using this brass tubing and these stainless steel drive shafts. This was quite a difficult and long process. I start this process by measuring some 4mm brass tubing. I then use a rotary tool to cut the brass tubing. Now that I have this cut, I file off the burrs. I do the same for the rudder tube. Next I create some bushings. They have an inner diameter of 2mm and an outer diameter of 3mm. This means that they will fit inside the prop and rudder tubes and support a 2mm stainless steel shaft. Now I insert the bushing into the prop tube. Then I use a 3mm drive shaft just to push it down about 1mm to create an area to hold some solder. Finally I settled on using this piece of 2mm push rod that has an angle bent into it. This worked out great as it prevented the 2mm shaft from falling too far down into the bushing, making it much easier to remove. I did the same for the other end of the prop tube and the rudder tube, and here are the results. They both spin freely on a 2mm shaft. Now I start making the inner shafts. I cut them both with the rotary tool and file off the burrs. I file a small groove into the prop shaft. This groove will be used for the prop scrub screw. I then measure 3mm on both ends of the rudder shaft, 
then use a special tool I made that helps me grind off two flat surfaces on each end of the shaft on the same angle. This is done to lock the rudder shaft, steering arm and the rudder in place. Here is the results of all the prop shaft parts. I also have some 1mm brass bushings for both ends and here are all the parts for the rudder shaft. Next I fill both the prop tube and the rudder tube with food grade silicone grease. This is a nice thin grease that doesn't cause too much friction for the prop shaft. The next stage in building the boat is to glue all of the hull pieces together. When I designed this hull, I added these small tab pieces. They are used to help position the different parts so that they get glued into the correct locations. I'm just using regular CA glue or super glue. I glue in the front ribbing, then I glue in the battery mount, rear ribbing, motor mount, and here is the result of gluing in all the hull pieces. Now I create the water cooling coil. I start by designing and 3D printing my own coil winder. I measure out the length of copper tube and cut it. Then I fill it with water and place it into the freezer until the water turns to ice. Because there is ice inside the copper tube, it prevents the tube from collapsing as I wind it. I then file off the burrs and place it over the motor. For the next part of the water cooling system, I cut four pieces of 4mm brass tubing. Two for the inlet and outlets, a small one for the joiner, then the main pickup tube that has an angle cut into it so that it can pick up the water. My original idea was to use a piece of silicone tube, but in order to get a good flow, I would need to have a large loop like this, and it wouldn't look that great. So I designed this little 3D printed pickup system for the back of the boat. Then I glue them to the rear of the boat. Now it's time to sand and paint the hull. I just used some 400 grit sandpaper to sand it down a bit. This makes a reasonably smooth surface and helps the paint to stick. Next I prepare the hull for painting by covering the brass parts of the water cooling pickup with masking tape and also cover the inner hull area. I now spray on the undercoat, allow it to dry and sand it a little before applying the main coats. Next I prepare the hull for painting the small trim by covering up all the parts that I don't want to get paint on. I paint the trim, wait for it to dry and peel off the masking tape and remove the paper. The next thing I do is design the prop. I print this with a layer height of 0.12mm. This prop is just 16mm in diameter. Initially, it does look quite messy. I remove the supports and clean it up with some 400 grit sandpaper. I then tap the M2 thread and screw in the tiny M2 grub screw. Now I install the prop kit into the hull. Then install the two small bushings on each end. Screw on the prop and install the spur gear. I chose this gear because it's what I had on hand, and it works with the pinion gear to give a 2 to 1 reduction ratio. I then install the rudder sleeve and use a small amount of silicone on both ends. The way this has been designed is so that if there's a problem with the rudder sleeve or the prop sleeve, they can be removed, fixed or replaced. Everything about the creation of this boat is done in such a way that most components are removable and replaceable. As I wanted to avoid having things permanently glued in place, apart from the motor mount, but this is one of many things that I plan to fix in version 2. Next I glue the 3D printed and painted rudder onto the rudder shaft and insert it into the hull. Next I attach the small 3D printed rudder arm. I put some silicone into the small cavity that I modelled for the end of the prop sleeve. Here is the results, all installed and watertight. Now it's time to install all the components. I start by installing the motor. This is a 130 motor that is rated for 7.4 volts. It also has carbon brushes and is capable of doing 33,000 RPM. I put some serra grease on the POM gears and screw down the motor mount. I then install the servo and the push rod that I custom made. Install the battery. Next I install the silicone tubing for the water cooling. Then I get the motor controller and the radio receiver installed. When I started designing this boat, I didn't know anything about hydrodynamics or boat design. But since building this boat, I have learnt an amazing amount. As it turns out, what I designed for this boat is called a displacement hull. Now, this is not really an issue, but it does limit the maximum speed at which the boat can travel. It's time to start printing the upper portion of the boat. This is mostly printed in one piece. However, some smaller details are printed individually, such as the lights, 
and windows. These windows are printed in clear PLA. I then start to remove the supports from the upper cabin area. As you can see there's two holes for the rear clips, but I have since modified it to just have one. I sand the top, file off some excess. I notice that there are some rather large lines in the top, so I apply some contact filler, sand it smooth before applying the undercoat and the main coat. And here are the results. I print out the railings in one piece. Some supports were required. I sand them down, give them an undercoat, and finally paint them with some silver gloss enamel. Then I glue them in place with some CA glue. In this next part, I'm going to briefly cover how I installed the lights and got them working. The next thing I do is paint the lights along with a few other details. I then glue the clear PLA light covers onto each light, then glue the top rail lights. I make sure that the LEDs I'm gluing are the correct colour, as I have a red light for port, a green light for starboard, and a white light for stern, and two extra white lights for the main navigation. I move the resistor on the main navigation lights, as I think it will look better with the resistor being hidden. This is also why I chose to use black and white wires here, as it blends in with the boat's colour theme. I then glue in all the light housings. Next I solder all the lights together so that they are in a parallel circuit, each with their own resistor. These all get soldered to a plug that I seal off with silicone. Next I glue in the boat windows, screw on the removable rear cabin wall, and then glue on the tiny boat horn details. I am extremely happy with how the lights turned out, and I think it's a really great feature to add. Now I design the seals. Originally, I wanted to print this with TPU. However, I only have 95A TPU, and this is a little too hard for making an actual seal. A 3D printed seal would work a lot better with softer TPU. However, for this design, I decided to make a silicone mold out of TPU. I make a 50-50 mold release solution with water and dish soap and brush it around the mold areas. I then put some black silicone in the mold and spread it out, making it flat with this TPU spatula I made. This is just regular caulking silicone you can find at most hardware stores. I wait for it to dry overnight, then peel it out. These small round seals are for the boat clips seen at the beginning of the video. I then glue the seal onto the boat hull using some clear silicone. This means that it's a temporary seal and it would be quite easy to peel off and replace in the future. I'm aware that you can make a mold with regular PLA without needing any mold release as it only has a temporary bond to PLA and this is why I use it for sealing the boat sleeves in place. I then create a plug that allows me to get two parallel outputs from the battery. I plug it in to test it and we are now ready to take it to the local park pond for the main demonstration. Before we head out to the park, I will just show the total weights. The boat is 200 grams and the top half by itself is 50 grams. Okay, so we've made it to the park and now I'm gonna put the boat in the water for the main demonstration. Plug that in. As you can see, the boat runs quite well and it looks really neat in the water. This boat was never designed for speed. However, I was hoping for a tiny bit more, but this is fine for my first ever boat design. Due to the shape of the displacement hull I have designed, the speed is limited. You will notice that if I try to go faster, the boat will wobble left to right. This is caused by the hull speed and the boat's center of gravity being too far above the center of buoyancy. A hull speed is physically governed by its shape and length. If I try to exceed this speed, the hull will wobble left to right within the transverse wave that is created at the center point of the hull. So this type of hull shape is more suited for longer vessels like ships. The hull shape is something I'm going to improve in version 2, using all the knowledge I have learned from making this version. Another issue I noticed is that if you go over algae, it will get caught up in the prop and the boat is very likely to get stuck. I might look into designing some type of prop guard to mitigate this in version 2. I know that some of you would like to get hold of the STL files for this project and I would like to make that happen. I'm also planning to release another video about version 2 with all the improvements that I've made. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. This was my biggest YouTube project so far, and I look forward to having you return for my future videos.
you might like to check out a few other videos that I've made.